Hey guys, welcome to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel and in this video I want to show you 45 brand new ball python morphs that are coming to the ball python scene and if you dabble on morphmarket.com you're looking for some new snakes there's only about three or four that are even listed on morph market they're that new they're brand new and some of the combinations that are just coming out we can see on morph market but some of these other ones you really don't know what the potential is for some of these and even the base morphs for some of these snakes just really blew me away and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Okay so I'm going to kick things off with the sunrise gene and you guys know I've been looking at, at the sunset gene it's the recessive this is actually a sunrise and this is the first picture I've ever seen of this of this snake this morph and I can't really tell if it's dominant co-dominant or recessive they're just kind of sneaking a little glimpse of their project and I'm kind of thinking that this is actually on the world of ball pythons and I'm thinking people are just kind of sneaking uh, it's like a sneak preview of a dinker project that they named and it looks like they're actually proving it out and getting some really cool stuff and um, the, they've just kind of released the first images of a lot of these morphs. That's what I'm thinking, that they actually haven't really made a lot of combinations yet. And here's another one. This one's actually called the Whitewash. And it almost looks like an Enchi in a reduced pattern. But actually, if you go over to MorphMarket.com, they actually list the Whitewash. Uh, you can see it's like a pink color right here, which means it's actually a recessive. So it looks like an Enchi, but it's actually recessive or an Enchi is uh, co-dominant because if there's a super form, you can have a super Enchi. And if we move to the next snake here, this is the next morph. This is a black granite, which is kind of interesting. I didn't find anything on Morph Market for uh, anything for sale or if that has sold for the black granite gene. It's, it looks like this was produced by Outback Reptiles. There's only one picture, and I wish I knew a little bit more about it, but it's it looks like it definitely has some potential. Uh, definitely looks a lot different than a normal. It's, it's kind of broken up almost like a calico, but it kind of keeps the, the alien head patterns. And a lot of these, you really don't know the potential until you start mixing it with a lot of the other genes. And I'm gonna close some of these windows here. So let's move on to the Jolt. And this is the first time I've actually even heard of the Jolt. There's just one picture, and it's this is really, really an impressive, dark-looking snake. There's really, um, uh, it's, it's it almost looks like a goldish, dark color. Almost, it's uh, n almost unlike anything I've ever seen. Uh, there's there's actually a morph I've seen like this. I can't remember the name of it, but it looks similar to this. But this, I really don't know <laughs> anything about this. This almost looks like uh, like a dominant or co-dominant, but you know, you really can't tell from this picture. So let's move on to the Time Bomb. <laughs> I love that name. This is the Time Bomb. And a lot of times you'll see, you know, uh, you know, like these nicknames Time Bomb. And a lot of times it's a combination of multiple genes. And no, these are just straight single gene morphs. This is a base morph. The new stuff coming out on the market. This is brand new. And there's this one's only in one picture. And it's it's really interesting how it's kind of faded out a little bit and it'll be interesting to see how these actually prove out. Here's another one and this one is called the Magenta and this one actually has four pictures which is kind of interesting. Here is the Magenta. This one is not on Morph Market so we really don't know anything about it and this is made by the first produced by Barry Summerhaze which is pretty interesting and don't really know anything about that one either <laughs> it's just kind of the, the sneak peek at the new stuff coming out and here's another one called the darkling which is pretty amazing this is the darkling there's two pictures and there is the darkling here is another one the KS hypo so a hypo is essentially the ghost and this looks like a uh, and this one actually says it's recessive so it's probably a different line of ghosts uh, there's actually two pictures here's another one and it doesn't really look as faded out as your typical ghost which is kind of interesting this one is also not on morph market 
Here's another one, <clears throat> which I think is kind of interesting. This is actually a fire. The fire is pretty common, but this is actually uh, the Lone Star Reptiles line. <laughs> and, and usually you get a fire and it's and you really don't know which line the fire comes from. And, and typically the, the, the fire is not really uh, differentiated between... It would be interesting to see if you bred this with, with other combos, how it differs than the, your typical uh, fire. <clears throat> and here's another one. Let's see what this one is. This is the Blaze. And a lot of these up front here, I noticed that a lot of them are really close to normals. And you really can't tell that there's that much of a difference. But, you know, a lot of these projects, you start breeding them with other things, and you really pop out some impressive stuff. And, and the further down I get, the further, you know, some of them down the line, <laughs> I'll get to them, and some of them are really impressive. And these, these initial ones really look more just kind of, you know, similar to normals, slightly different, but they, it looks like they have some potential. Here is the Banta. And this is actually, it's actually listed as a dominant gene, which is interesting. So, you know, in the ball python genetics world, when we say dominant, there's really no super form associated with it. And it almost looks like an Enchi. This one is definitely not on morph market either. Here is another one. This is a mirror. A a mirror, <laughs> if I could say that, a mirror, and it's it's another kind of an enchi like. I like kind of like the white coming up the bottom, and uh, this one has two pictures. This one looks really, it almost looks like a leopard kind of uh, pattern with the white coming up, almost like a spider. That one looks like it has a lot of potential. That one's really impressive. And let's see what else we have here. This one is the Kos Mojave which um, um, actually, um, it's, 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 there's a Mojave out there. This definitely looks different than a Mojave. Maybe it's a different line of Mojave specific to this breeder. It looks like it was first produced by Jason Morgan. This one you may have heard of. This is actually the Wookiee. And the Wookiee is pretty new to the ball python market. And I've actually seen a lot of people making a lot of Wookiee combos. And actually I pulled up um, Morph Market and there's some really cool stuff that people are making with the Wookiees. It's, it's one of the new projects. People are starting to prove it out and it's, it's coming to uh, Morph Market. And you can see uh, the total number of Wookiees on here was 32 ball python combinations. So the, the thing I really like to do is I like to look at um, some of the potential... Like, here's what a Wookiee Enchi does. You know, the Enchi has kind of a banded pattern. <clears throat> it looks like the, the Wookiee breaks it up. And and I really don't like to see a lot of genes mixed with uh, a new morph because I like to see the potential just kind of as a standalone. For example, right here, look at this pinstripe. That's a pinstripe Wookiee. And you can see it's definitely different than your regular pinstripe, but it has a lot more busy of a pattern broken up and, and the Wookiee is really kind of in this one it looks really like a normal but look at this one this is a butter Wookiee right here this is uh, butter is essentially the same as a lesser so you take a lesser you mix it with the Wookiee and look at the striping and the, the clear belly you get on that you can tell, definitely tell this has a lot of potential people are buying into it and look at the prices on these for a butter Wookiee it's a thirty five hundred dollars that sold in 2017 Here's a, a Wookiee Cinnamon Yellow Belly in 2018 sold for $2,000. Uh, just this Wookiee right here sold for $3,500. So, and that was in 2018. So definitely has some potential. Here's a Wookiee Blast. Uh, it's basically uh, like a Lemon Blast in a Wookiee. Which is really cool. I really like the Lesser and the Wookiee together. How it just—it's just amazing. And look at this one, the Cinnamon Wookiee. It's just you know, thirty-five hundred dollars. I mean, this this is a really cool project. I think the Wookiee has a lot of potential. And here's a, a Wookiee that, uh, uh, like one of the originals from twenty thirteen. This is really—I really like the 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 breakup of the pattern on this. Look at what it does to the pinstripe. This is just the Wookiee and the pinstripe. And, I mean, if you look at some of these combos, just look at what it does to the pastel. The pastel Wookiee right here, that is insane. It's just 
kind of bumblebee looking. I mean, just the, uh, how it adds to some of these combos. This is, you know, that's where I really like to, to invest in a project is where it's, you know, people are starting to prove it out and you're getting some really cool combos. And you could definitely see an influence that's really drastic in some of these combos. And the Wookiee is definitely something that I would consider uh, investing in. Here's another one. This is the Grim, and actually, it's been out for a little bit. I've actually found some on Morph Market here. This is the base Morph. There's a few pictures to the Grim. You may have heard of the Grim. This is one of the ones that um, that has been on the scene for a little bit. Uh, pretty new to the market. There's only 30 on Morph Market, and some of these Grims they look <laughs> almost pretty much like like normals and then you start mixing them with with other stuff and, and it kind of um, uh, kind of pops you know on some of this stuff the, I would say the Grim you know I've, from what I've seen I don't really see a whole lot of stuff that's that's really proving out the Grim that would really sell me on the morph there's a lot of base Base pair, base morphs, and it looks like they're really cheap. Look, they're 175. Here's one for eight, uh, 650 dollars that sold last year. So uh, it's it's not really high end, and and it seems like if if you mix them with other morphs, and you really prove that it's really has a lot of potential, and it really drastically changes. I think that's where you can really command a higher price versus if if it's not really um, not really making that much of an impact on some of the other color and pattern mutations so here is another one this one is the Jackson <laughs> J-A-X-O-N and there's actually two pictures and that's it that's all you're getting and it's definitely different than anything I've ever seen this looks like it has a lot of potential the Jackson and it's really not it's not a morph market and there's nothing I can really find about it. And this one is the Arid, A-R-I-D, which is pretty interesting. There's one picture here. And actually, if you look over on Morph Market, it says <laughs> it's either dominant or co-dominant, but there's nothing that has ever been uh, posted on Morph Market as far as the Arid. And it looks like it's it's almost like a different version of a pastel. The pastel usually doesn't have this repeating pattern through it and a black stripe down the back so it's it looks like it has a lot of potential and I haven't really seen anything from it here is another one this is the fusion and if you look on morph market for fusion there's actually been some stuff out there and the, this is just uh, the base morph one picture produced first produced by the Florida reptile ranch and if we look over here on morph market we can kind of see some of the potential of the fusion there's only been 14 ball pythons uh, that have been had the fusion gene in on um, on morph market and you can see that the prices are pretty high $1200 uh, here's one for 2250 a Fusion, 100% Head Clown, so it definitely this is really an interesting pattern as far as just the base morph and a Head Clown, and you can really see some of the potential uh, of, of the Fusion gene, and let's see... Um, yeah, I haven't really seen a lot of combos that would really sell me on the Fusion. Um, here's a... a Fusion Calico Pastel, so uh, you start adding too many genes and you can't really tell what the Fusion does actually to the combo because it kind of, you know, you get a bunch of stuff on top of it and it kind of masks it. Here's another one. This is the Bullseye, <laughs> which is, that's a pretty cool name. There's actually two pictures for the Bullseye, and this, you know, some of this stuff, like I pulled out that Dinker project that you know everyone says oh yeah that's just a head pied and a lot of the, a lot of these this new stuff you think you know maybe it's uh, you know something new you pop out a normal that looks like has a crazy wild pattern you know it's always good to hold them back and try to prove them out and you can have something brand new and you know you start mixing it with other genes and, and you could be surprised here's another one that's called the D stripe <laughs> which looks like it almost looks exactly like the tri stripe I thought and it's it's interesting this actually has seven pictures but it looks like it only has one solid stripe instead of 
multiple stripes. It, you know, to me, this really looks a lot like the tri-stripe, just kind of a different version. And the tri-stripe is, uh, this is actually recessive. So it would be interesting to see where that this came from and how it differs from the tri-stripe. And this was actually produced in 2013 by NOTM. And it's, it's kind of interesting that, it um, would be interesting to see if they're still working with this. And you can actually look on Morph Market, and there's actually, there actually is a D-stripe. Nothing has ever been posted. This is the Turbo. <laughs> I love some of these names. This is really interesting. There's only two pictures of the Turbo, and um, it's a co-dominant. We don't know who first produced it. And, um, oh yeah, it says uh, TJL Exotics. And that is the turbo, and it always makes me wonder if someone actually, you know, produced this and then named it and then tried to prove it out, and maybe it didn't prove out, and maybe this is just, you know, some of the stuff's kind of lagging on here is stuff that was, you know, Dinker projects that they named and they tried to prove out, and it maybe maybe it did prove out, maybe it just wasn't that impressive and it really didn't catch on, which is, which is another possibility. So let's look at this one. This is the Matriarch, and there's only two pictures that I can see of this. This almost kind of looks like a lesser ghost or something. You know, it, it, it's, it's really interesting how it's faded out, and this says it's actually recessive, which is, which is pretty interesting. This is the only picture I have of the Matriarch, and this was produced by Joe Rolo and Jason Vlenica. Here is one called the Lattice, which is kind of interesting. It almost looks like um, almost looks like the Acid kind of a, a morph, which is which is one of the new ones too. There's only two pictures of this one, and that's pretty much it. This was actually produced by Joseph Saunders. Here's one called the DNA. <laughs> DNA, <laughs> I like it. Uh, and this is actually has four pictures here. DNA. I really like the photography on this. They have black background with like spotlights on it. It's really different than I've ever seen any ball pythons. But it's it's interesting uh, how it's it's quite a bit different. It it has a different kind of a it looks like it has a lot of potential. And there's only four pictures on this one. It's it's really stunning. It has it seems like it's a really high contrast and like pretty much of a yellow. And let's see what else we have here. We have the cinder. And if you guys have uh, heard of the cinder, I've actually heard of it uh, before. And it's it's kind of one of the newcomers on the block. And if we look on Morph Market, there's actually 20 ball pythons with cinder. And, and the thing I really like about cinder is <laughs> it really is mixing really well with a lot of ball pythons and look at this this is the lesser cinder right here and look at how impressive it is it puts the stripe down the back puts white spots on the on the sides and look at the price they're selling for 4500 so you know this has a lot of potential it's proven to be really really impressive and look at this one this is the cinder lemon blast it almost kind of looks kind of like a sunset this is really really impressive so one of the projects you know if if I had you know a few thousand dollars <laughs> to throw down on the cinder project I would definitely think about you know, doing the cinder project and this says it is dominant so uh, it makes me wonder if there's actually a super a super cinder so t typically if it, there was a super they'd list it as co-dominant and let's see um, this one's interesting. This is a super pastel cinder, which looks pretty wild. Here's another pastel lesser cinder, which I really like what it does with the lesser. So if, if I was to buy the cinder, I'd mix it with my lesser and maybe try to mix in, you know, like a bamboo lesser cinder or <laughs> try to go with a scaleless lesser cinder, you know, mix in the cinder and lesser and then something else on top of it to really make it pop. So that's... I would say Cinder is definitely one of the ones that seems like it would be really hot on the market. That's that would um, be coming up pretty pretty fast to the reptile shows. This one is called the High Blush, which is interesting. I never <clears throat> never heard of this one before. This is just a few pictures. It has four pictures of the High Blush, and that's pretty much it. 
This one is the Gen X. Here's another one that is has one pictures. Actually, was produced by Justin Kolbilka, which is interesting. Oh no, it's the Gene X. <laughs> I'm sorry, not Gen X. It's Gene X. And yes, I've heard of the Gene X. It's on Morph Market. And I was kind of looking at at um, some of the the potential of the Gene X, and and really what Justin listed here, um, uh, and all these combos. Really, I really can't tell a lot of the potential because it's mixed with so many other genes. So you mix it with you know the the Gene X Orange Dream Yellow Belly Pied, <laughs> and you get it's like well what did the Gene X do to that snake? And it's and for me it's really hard to tell unless you had like a you know a Gene X Lemon Blast or a Gene X Pastel, and that's where you're gonna really see you know the the base morphs with the Gene X to see the potential, and then you mix it with some of this stuff, and uh, you can't really tell from this the the real true potential of the Gene X because it's mixed with so many genes. Here's one called the Aurora, which is interesting. I just have a couple pictures here, and that is it. This one is called the uh, Circinus. <laughs> I'm probably killing these names. I can't pronounce them very good. But this is a uh, dominant Circinus. Circinus. <laughs> this is really reduced, really broken up. It's really interesting. It almost. Uh, Almost wipes out the sides on the snake, which is, which is really different. So I haven't really found a lot about that. And then this one is the cosmic. <laughs> haven't really seen a lot about the cosmic. A couple pictures here. Here's one you've probably heard before. It's it's pretty new to the ball python scene. It's called the rainbow. It's only been out for a few years, and these are. These are holding their value. This is kind of a version of an albino. Uh, it's it's a, a recessive gene. And actually on Morph Market, there's a few rainbows that are listed. They're holding their price really well. Here's a, just a rainbow Enchi Het Ghost for $7,500 produced last year. Here's a rainbow Pastel Enchi for $5,500. Um, let's see, let's see if there's any that sold. Here's one in 2018, a Rainbow Super Enchi Ghost that sold for 5500 from 2018. So these are, these are really holding their value. There's not very many of them. Good project to get into, the Rainbow. Of course you have to have about five grand to get into it. <laughs> Here is the Sparkler. <laughs> and as I'm thinking, where do people come up with these names? This is the Sparkler, and I haven't really seen anything about the Sparkler. There is one picture, and that's it. Here is the Ice Fire. That's cold and hot. Ice Fire. <laughs> this is a really cool snake. And they have actually seven pictures, which is which is pretty neat. Of, it looks like pretty much, uh, I don't know if this is the same snake, some of them have a little more blushing or it could be the same snake over a period of time where it actually grew up. I'm not sure if this has actually been proven out. It's nothing on Morph Market about a lot of these snakes. Here is the Sirius, and I keep thinking, are you serious? <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it, Sirius. And this is only two pictures of the Sirius. And there's nothing on Morph Market on that one either. Here is the Sapphire. That is a really cool snake. It's really, really impressive. And the interesting thing is this picture is a lot different than this picture. So I don't know if it was really bright yellow when it was small and then it grew up and it faded out, which is possible, I guess. And if you look on Morph Market, actually they do list... The sapphire, but um, there's never been a snake actually posted under that gene. They just cataloged the gene. Here is the maker. <laughs> I know nothing about the maker other than it looks like a really cool snake. It almost is, it almost reminds me of a GHI really broken up, but not as crazy as a GHI. This has, looks like it has a lot of potential, and I uh, haven't seen anything at all anywhere about maker. This is the Nebula, and this is 
This is really interesting. I like the white coming up and the kind of the striping on the sides. It looks like this has a lot of potential. This um, actually hasn't really been, I uh, haven't seen it on Morph Market or anything else as far as finding any other information about a lot of these jeans. Here is the Shinobi, which is one of the most stunning snakes that I've seen. This is actually uh, listed as a dominant snake. It almost looks like almost looks like a tri-stripe kind of, sort of, <laughs> or a genetic stripe or something with that stripe down the back. It's really, really interesting. And uh, if you look over on Morph Market, they actually list the Shinobi, but they don't actually have any snakes. And that one, boy, if... You know, if someone actually could prove that out and start producing them, that is really, really something, especially in a dominant. I've seen similar snakes that are pretty much all recessive, but nothing in a dominant, which, which is really interesting. Here is the Nova. Don't really know anything. <laughs> it says it's a dominant gene, and this is Nova. The there's just one picture. And actually, you go over to Morph Market, and oh, there is some from Nova. I'm sorry, this is... Um, I didn't think there was anything from Nova, but there is. And the interesting thing about the Nova is it definitely, it seems like it definitely changes the patterns. Like this, these are both pastel Novas. It definitely has an influence um, on the snakes. But I was kind of looking through some of these. It doesn't really have that much of an influence. And, and some of these you really can't tell if the Nova is actually in there. And that's probably why the prices are a little bit low. <laughs> so on this one, the Pastel Nova is only $200. So, and a lot of times the price reflects the potential of the gene. So, um, you know, a lot of times if, if they start proving out the genes and there's, there's not a big influence on a lot of the combos, then, you know, it's hard to sell <laughs> in the first place. It's not really in high demand. So that's why the prices are like $200. You can get into the Nova project, but it's not really, it doesn't seem like it makes that much of a, of a dramatic effect on some of the combos. Here is the bingo. I thought this was interesting because there's actually a gene called the bongo. And you could actually cross a bongo with a bingo and get a bingo bongo. <laughs> which, would be, which would be really interesting. And I haven't really seen anything except this one picture. And it looks kind of like just like a normal with a kind of a stripe down the back. And a lot of these are, it's you know, it's kind of like the yellow belly. Kind of looks like a normal and start, until you start mixing it with, you know, asphalt and gravel and stuff like that. And then you get some really dramatic combos. And let's see, this is, um, um, this is the banded, um, let's see, this is the banta. I actually, I think I actually closed that tab. I had another tab open that was called the banta. And I was kind of playing around with this. This is actually... Uh, on Morph Market, and here is this. I thought this was really interesting. This is a different line of calico. So, so there's a lot of different lines of calico, and they all kind of get blurred together. And I, I supposedly they have a specific line here of calico, which is interesting because a lot of the different calicos don't really, they're not really associated with different lines and they, they kind of get all jumbled together. So I, th I thought it'd be interesting to, for someone to actually come out with a specific line of calico and for that to actually catch on and be popular, it, it might be really tough because there's quite a few lines of calico that all get kind of blurred together. And then, let's see what we have. This is the Monsoon, which is really interesting. So the Monsoon is kind of a newcomer to the game. And this is, this is the one. There's actually a few on Morph Market. And this is probably, I would say, one of the most dramatic base combos that I've ever seen is the Monsoon. And, <laughs> and obviously you can tell this is completely different than a normal. This is actually recessive. So you need two copies of the gene actually to get a visual monsoon. And this is, I would say this is one of the, the least, the less popular uh, projects. Uh, the prices are really, really high. That's one of the reasons. And it, since it has such a dramatic effect on the ball python, you can tell that it's really in high demand. The prices are really high and it's hard to buy into these projects. And look, at these are all from 2018. 
and these are fifteen thousand dollars sixteen thousand dollars and this one sold for sixteen thousand here's another one calico mojave monsoon female inquire and it sold <laughs> so you know it's probably equal to or more than sixteen thousand dollars to buy into the monsoon project and if i had you know hundred thousand dollars <laughs> there's a few of these projects that i would definitely buy into and monsoon would definitely be on my list okay so there you have it those are 45 ball python morphs most of which i didn't even know existed so thanks for watching and i will see See you next time.